Father's afraid of the ground. Even zero science stuff will yield data for the lab. Send what you can and then get through it. Let's get let's get to the station. Let's see about docking. So, we've got this station in orbit. Let's make sure we know which way it's going. Okay, so we want to go northish. We're pretty much under its orbit. Well, we can wait a little bit. Here, now we're really under its orbit. Now, I'm not going to calculate the launch azimuth. Uh, yeah, let, let's... Should I? No, it, it doesn't really help. Okay, let's just let's just go for it. It's minimus after all. Correcting inclination is not a big deal. Okay, so we've got a target marker there, but we know we need to go uh, northeast. So here we go. Oh, that ladder is still there. Thrust weight on Nimbus? I think it was two. I think it was two, and that was full. Super efficient, though. Not very quick. Super efficient. Oh, no, this is excellent. And by the way, l uh, let me reinforce. Uh, in real solar system, the one kilonewton thruster is the mainstay of the space program. And if you watch the uh, real solar system series, you'd understand why. But yeah, this is this is excellent. I am uh, quite pleased because we have plenty of Delta V on this vessel. Still got 923 left and it's just cruising on up there. Best tip for new players. Uh, don't fear failure. Failure is the way we learn. Actually, uh, KSP definitely sort of uh, makes failure fun. Asparagus staging and struts. Yeah, Devin's got uh, some good ones. More boosters is good too. Um, what apolapsis do I need? I have no idea. I just made the rendezvous without even paying attention. Watch introduction videos. Actually, now that you mention it, well, let me, uh, let's see. Okay, well, that did not work as planned. If you're seeing, I'm, I'm trying to uh, meet up with it at the ascending node. That's what I'm trying to do here. And that uh, saves me the trouble of correcting the inclination right away. Everything ever learned in the history of man was learned through trial and error. Yep, basically. That's why you try to learn from other people's mistakes. Uh, it's not quite the same, actually. It doesn't really stick with you. I mean, some do, of course. But sometimes you've got to stumble on your own, too. Okay, it's not quite decisive about exactly how far away I'm going to be when I get there. I'm going to trust it's going to be point two. Okay, here we go. How do you do an exactly circular orbit? As anybody who's watched my videos can tell you, I I don't even bother. <laughs> I The only time I bother with a, a circular orbit is when I'm trying to put something into a geostationary or kerbal stationary orbit. That's basically it. Okay, so here's how we rendezvous. We made the maneuver node to get to the station. I am pointing at my retrograde vector. For educational purposes, I will not turn the station. Modelists, uh, for this series, just uh, Kerb uh, Kerbal Engineer and Ambient Light Adjustment. There is a mod list for a different uh, install, but not this one. Okay, where's our docking port? Okay, now burning towards the station. And that's quite enough.
docking port is there. There it is. Uh, can I select it? Yep, okay, so setting the Clampatron docking port as target. So it's up there. We'll line up with it uh, by going a bit like this. I'm gonna use RCS now. So I'm deliberately pushing my marker away from the target. Okay, Iron Sky. Oh, uh, Nazi on the dark face. Oh, jeez. Not my sort of thing. Okay, so for those who want to know about docking, well, I line one thing up at a time. So, here we go. I'm lining up in this direction. Okay. I think I might be getting too close to it. Hold on. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh, other way, other way, other way, other way. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so don't do that. Whoa, what the heck is that going by? Uh, we've got some. Oh, the science spammer debris? Huh. I know we have to go up a bit. You see, I want to go up in this direction. Okay, let's see where we're at. I think we can head for it. Sorry, docking is not the easiest thing to explain. So here, I'm just trying to line up with the port. So I'm gonna sort of focus on the port like this. Unfortunately, our lights are facing the wrong way. We are too high, too high. Sorry, I'm not doing a very good job. Okay, sorry. You usually control the vessel in camera mode locked. Well, you see how I turn the camera all over the place. I, I tend to have a different pattern. So once we're lined up, we can sort of scoot in and it should be all right. Okay, there we go, we're all linked up. Now, does he have the EVA to take the science in? Or can we transfer science some other way? Well, I guess he's got the science all down there. So, um... Yeah, how do, how do we transfer the science? I guess we have to EVA him. Is that right? I've never done this with the with the research lab before. Okay, well, I'm just going to assume I have to EVA him. Okay, so uh take data. Okay, anyway, we did it this way. So, if we uh start research, Our rate seems to be zero signs per day. Electric charge is going down. Well, we're on the dark side. We can't orient with, to the sun. Okay, so we have to process in lab module. Okay. 
I'm gonna transmit this one. I think. Yeah, I wanna transmit that one. Okay, now 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 we're getting somewhere, okay. This just says keep data. I think I'm doing something wrong. Okay, so now what? Careful of electric charge. Ah. Well, uh, we'll uh, we'll time warp. Well, now we've got electric charge. Is it active? Start research. Okay, now we are researching, but at a fairly slow pace. So, now what have you guys said? Um, let me try and orient it. Which way would be good? After you're done with that, you can take the science back wherever you want. Okay, so we can uh, take the science from review data, uh, excuse me, review data and bring it back. There is a max. I don't think we've hit the max. Don't transmit first. Always put in the lab research first. Okay, so that one that I transmitted, I shouldn't have done. Okay. Well, we are we we are working on it. Okay, so let's get back to this base center, and we'll proceed with other things. Okay, so I wanted to try and make a reusable launcher that was not as powerful as the unflippable. Okay, let's just take the music from the top again. In particular, I want something uh, Falcon 9-ish. Uh, in honor of what they're uh, attempting to do tomorrow. I'm sure everybody's trying this sort of thing now. Okay, well, maybe we'll send another scientist over to get the better rate of processing. Uh, it is pretty slow from the look of it. Okay, Kerbal Engineer, go away for now. Um, let's say we're building one with just a... We'll just have that as a temporary payload. So I think I'll just test it with a simple payload like this. So Kerbal Engineer knows that it's about a 9 ton payload. And my main question is whether it's going to overheat actually. Because we're going to be clustering the engines at the bottom. We gotta have the LVT-30 at the center and then the LVT-45s on the side using tail connector A. Nope, wrong one. Okay. And the science generation is higher when the lab is full of data. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, well, we won't want to transmit any of, the, any of the others because the others all have a benefit to bringing it back home. So we'll probably bring it all back home. And we'll, have to, of course, have to land on Mimbus a few more times to gather more science before doing that. Okay, so the question is whether this is going to overheat. That's one question. Other question is, how do we put our landing legs on? We don't have as much... Do these girder segments overheat? Because I'm about to use them for nefarious purposes. I think that might be bad. Nope, any way you look at it, I need those girder segments. Slide those cone as crossfeed. Um, why are we mentioning that? Yeah, I know these have cross... Uh, these have crossfeed too, don't they? The, the These tail connectors have crossfeed. Yeah, no, it's not just the description's max temp. Yeah, I mean, it always says 2000. Cubic octagonal strut says 2002. Uh, I mean, they all say 2000. Uh, the question is whether 
what 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 the reality is is what I'm asking. Yeah, I'm gonna put air brakes. Hold on. I'm not there yet. Not the most aerodynamic thing I've ever seen. Okay, let's work on the top. Yeah, we're gonna have air brakes. We're gonna have uh, Werner thrusters. We are going to have... Well, first let's check our Delta V. Uh, atmosphere... Okay, well, this isn't as powerful as I'd like. I'm tempted to just put the gimbling engine in the center and have the non-gimbling engines on the side but I feel that's a recipe for disaster hold on let me lift this up a bit 430's on the outside staggered and the rest 45's it's not a bad idea let's go with that Yeah, we could land it using only the middle engine. Uh, we'll have to check that, but yeah. Uh, and I'll action group the engines. Let me do that right now. I'm going to uh, have the center engine toggled there. I'm going to have the outside LVT-45s toggle there. And I'm going to have the outside LVT-30s toggle there. Just in case. Will that be... I don't think 8 will be enough. Maybe 16. Oh, I hate you, Symmetry. Oh, I hate how that looks. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll go with 12 then. Just so it uh, has proper symmetry to it. Now, we need to put our probe core in and the batteries I guess we don't need to add in well it's always good to have an extra reaction wheel guess I'll put one in there just in case so we've got 3268 vacuum delta V here and my question is is this enough or is should we lighten the payload and I think we're just gonna go ahead and test that this is a pretty cheap launcher. I don't think there's anything else we need here. I think this basically covers it, uh, assuming we're landing on land, which is always a good question. Should I really be doing this in career mode? Well, I guess it, the most of the launcher is the launcher is the main cost here, so I guess it's all right. Let's try it. Okay, so remember, 3,268 meters per second. We have significant thrust-to-weight ratio. Did I lock the suspension? Ah! Perhaps that is a good thing to do. And uh, we must remember that uh, symmetry is doubled. Oh, wait. Locking suspension doesn't work with symmetry. Oh, I hate you. Okay, fine. Maybe I should offset the clamps a little bit. They look like they might smack into something. No, no sill panel just in case. It should work out. Uh, we should have enough battery power. If not, we'll just have to add more battery power next time. But I've done this enough. I hope that we've... I mean, I would expect that we have the right amount of battery power. I've, I really haven't played around with high thrust to weight ratio rockets much. As you probably know if you've watched my videos or watched me stream before, Put docking port to use the fuel? Yeah, I don't do fins much. Uh, we'll add fins if necessary. Uh, I really shouldn't be doing this in career mode, but let's see. Uh, we'll, add, we'll add other stuff uh, in a bit. We'll, we might action group the drogue shoots, etc. But uh, let's see how this works out. So yeah, normally I do low thrust to weight ratio rockets, but uh, here we go. Oh, you want to dock a docking port up there to use that fuel? Okay, hold on, that's a good idea. Okay, so adapter, where are you? There you are. So this is 0.1 tons. The nose cone is actually 0.2 tons. Docking port. 
And nose cone. Well, this one would weigh more. I guess we'll just go for this one. I guess that's fair. Okay, throttle is up. SAS is on. Here we go. Okay, well, here we go. Oh, yeah, I should have deactivated roll and pitch on the air brakes. Ah, crud. Well, gotta remember to do that next time. Uh, well, we'll do it in orbit if we get to orbit. I'm cutting out some of the engines. Uh, I should have slapped a Kerbal Engineer on this too. Just so that we could get the Apoapsis reading. There's a mod that gives you Kerbal Engineer on... Oh, no, I could add that. Oh, uh, it's just a conf uh, CFG file. Config file. I could I could put that throw that in if I wanted to. But that would take some explaining. And I, I want to do as little explaining about mods in this install as possible. So I just have Kerbal Engineer and Amulet Adjustment without any frills. Well, I guess we can dump the nose cone now. Well, we're not gonna leave that much fuel. This one was short. So I'm actually gonna transfer this fuel in here. So that I can bring it back, because we don't want to waste the cash. Now, this is still suborbital. I'm going to dump the tank. Oh, whoa! What? Oh, okay. Alright, that works. Oh, 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 oh. That was painful. That's another way to dispose of it. Okay, plotting for descent. This is going to be tough, because we saw that the unflippable uh, didn't work very well with 28 kilometers, so we have to go lower than 28. I, I shouldn't even plot it here. Let's, let me go around over, the, over to there first. So, this definitely doesn't have the payload capacity that I want. But at least we should try the basic system idea. Of course, it, it was just my launch profile. I think it would have worked out if my launch profile had been a lot better. I guess we'll go for 24.8 and see how that works out for us. And knowing how this works, I should probably just have the brakes out right now, shouldn't I? Okay, arrow breaking music, please. Come on. Uh, there we go. Oh, getting on your computer. Excellent. Okay, risking a bit of physical time warp here. Interesting that clustering the engines quite tightly did not produce any problems on the way up, so no overheating like that. Mass fraction of the engines and all the stuff to make it recoverable is getting too high and eat into the payload, yeah. Well, I mean, that's why recoverable launchers haven't been a big thing up till now, anyway. Uh, the reason why SpaceX can do it is because their engines, of course, have a high thrust weight ratio, they are very light engines. Our engines uh, in Kerbal Space Program are not very light engines. In fact, they are abnormally heavy engines. So that is a thing. Okay, we'll be short of the mountains. No, we're good. We don't need the brakes to avoid the mountains.
And I'm not using them because I want to get as far in as possible to get the best value. Okay, here I'll start applying brakes again. I don't know, uh, drag shoots, how... Uh, okay, well we can do it now, alright. Shoots. And more shoots. Gear down. SAS temporarily off. Okay, SAS, SAS back on. Looks like we have full parachute deployment. I'm putting on RCS so that the burners can help stabilize this thing. And 8.5 is not great. We'll have to use the engines. Let's see if one can do it. Now let me uh, shut those off. Wow, not very much. I think I should uh, have them on. I think that's more convincing. Anyway, electric charge is fine, by the way. Well, you know, the thing is... These, these recoverable stages do like to tip over, so I don't know if I should use just four landing legs. That is the greatest hazard to these things, tipping over, right? Once you get them uh, passing through the atmosphere safely, I mean. Oh, and that's what the Verners are there for as well. And so we see our Valiant Verner Thruster puttering away. And that is basically what's keeping it steady. Let's recover this. Why would I use mob propellant? Oh, uh, the Verner Thrusters don't use mob propellant. Verners use the regular fuel. That's the whole point of them. That's why they are good. We should rename it to Mushroom 9. Is there a good reason for that? Because I, I might consider it. Anyway, uh, we got our funds back. 92.8%, not bad. Okay, I'm gonna stop the music because I've been streaming for almost four hours now and I think I'm worn out. So, we need to continue with the whole Minmus science milking thing, obviously. That might be a little bit tedious, so I'll probably break it up with other activities like we did here. So uh, that'll be my plan. I won't just continuously do the Minmus thing. Uh, we need to do other things in between. And so we'll see what I do tomorrow. Uh, it'll depend on what happens and how I feel about it. But uh, I'll definitely be st streaming tomorrow at, uh, at the same time. So 1 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time and uh, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, sorry, Eastern Daylight Time. I'm tired now. 8 p.m. GMT. And is, does anybody want Central Time? Uh, I know Grizzbiz always wants Central Time. That's uh, 3 p.m. Central Time. Okay. Oh, that's why it, uh, it looked like that with the parachutes out. Okay. Well, well, we'll think about calling it Mushroom 9 once we launch it again. All right. So uh, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the stream. If you aren't following already, please do follow. And I'll see you tomorrow.